TikTok is going to stop scraping clipboard data, a nationwide bill could ban facial recognition, and NVIDIA discloses multiple vulnerabilities. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris and this is ThreatWire for June 30th, 2020. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. On to the news and props to Joel for sharing this story via Patreon. Back in March, TikTok took quite a bit of heat, along with several other applications as well as Apple, over the fact that these apps could read data that is copied onto a user's clipboard on their phone. While that data is cached on the clipboard before it's paced did anywhere, the apps were found to have access to this bug. So for example, if you copied a password out of your password manager and you switched to an application before pasting it anywhere, it could be intercepted by that app without your knowledge. Now, the fact that apps could access this data before it is pasted into a specific app is the concerning part, but Apple originally responded by saying that that's how cut and paste is supposed to work. So the security researcher who found this bug, his name is Tommy Misk, made some proof of concept applications which demo the problem. TikTok stated to Forbes at the time that the bug involves a problem with an outdated Google advertising SDK. But while other applications discontinued the ability to access data pre-pasted, TikTok never actually ended this practice, even though they obviously could have. Well, Apple finally must have agreed with Misk on this problem because they are now integrating a new warning system for iOS 14, which is due in the fall, to pop up a little banner alert anytime an application is pasting data from the clipboard without a user's express permission. And early beta users of iOS 14 have reported that TikTok use is giving them constant banner warnings. Annoying? Absolutely. But also a red flag showing that TikTok is still reading data from the clipboard even though it's not pasted into that application specifically. Now TikTok's updated end of June response to Telegraph is that they have a feature that identifies repetitive spam behavior, and that's triggering the banner, which is a completely different response than what they had given Forbes. TikTok stated that they will be removing this feature in an upcoming update to the iOS application, while Android devices do not share this vulnerability. A new bill was introduced on Thursday by Democratic Senators Ed Markey, Jeff Merkley, and Democratic Representatives Pramila Jayapal and Ayanna Presley that would ban the use of facial recognition by law enforcement nationwide. The bill is called the Facial Recognition and Biometric Technology Moratorium Act, and it would give the federal government the ability to prohibit biometric surveillance without explicit statutory authorization, alongside withholding certain federal public safety grants from states or local governments that engage in biometric surveillance. The entire bill and the proposal is available to read online, and I have linked those down below in the show notes. Now, since the bill includes no specific end date, it would be enacted until a new law was passed that would allow for this kind of surveillance. The bill explicitly includes definitions for biometric surveillance systems to include facial or other remote biometric recognition in real time or recorded, including voice recognition technology, and it also calls out the Burn Grant Program, which allows for federal grants that give millions of dollars to state and local law enforcement. Now, this would exclude anything authorized by Congress, but those exclusions would also be required to be audited and purposes recorded, including accuracy requirements, but none of those requirements are expressly given in the bill. Now, the bill also states that any data obtained in violation of the bill would be thrown out in investigations, and it would give plain the right to sue. In regards to the burn grants, no state or local law enforcement would receive funding unless they complied with the law and they set up their own policies to ban facial recognition. This bill comes after several months of scrutiny and concerns that have been raised around facial recognition, as well as several different cities already banning the use outright. As I have reported previously, many tech companies, including IBM and Microsoft, have chosen to put moratoriums on on their own surveillance software or just outright choosing to stop its development. Now, while this bill is still just being introduced, it could be a major step for the U.S. towards better privacy laws for citizens no matter what city you live in. 
Before we hit story number three, I wanted to say thank you so much to my supporters over at patreon.com slash threatwire. Check out these amazing new fur babies from my Hush Puppy Perk level patrons who are totally awesome for sending them in. I love them, keep them coming. And thank you so much because there is so much to cover in security and privacy. I never have time to discuss everything in these episodes. So I do what I can on the Patreon to make sure that I can cover as much as possible. If you wanna see me cover more InfoSec news as an audio podcast, or even a second episode of ThreatWire each and every week, check out the next Patreon goals to see how you can make that happen. We are getting closer and closer to those goals, and I would love to see that happen this year, so you can definitely make that possible. NVIDIA posted a security bulletin on June 24th detailing multiple vulnerabilities in the graphics drivers that could allow an attacker to target systems, to view sensitive information from a target, gain escalated privileges on the machine, or launch a denial of service attack. The vulnerabilities were reported by Cisco Telos, CyberArk Labs, SecureD Center, and two independent cybersecurity professionals, Thomas Carroll, and I apologize if I pronounce your name incorrectly, Citicorn Sagratana Pitak. The graphics driver is software that comes with NVIDIA components that allows for enabling high-end gaming optimized features that can work with their hardware. In total are over 10 CVEs for the GPU display driver and and vGPU software. Some examples of the GPU display driver vulnerabilities include an inter-process communication API issue that can lead to code executions, denial of service, or information disclosure. Another CVE is in the service host component, allowing for the same. And then the DirectX 11 user mode driver could cause a denial of service, while one in the UVM driver also leads to the same. In the vGPU software, vulnerabilities in the plugin itself could could lead to code execution attacks, denial of services, privilege escalation, and information disclosure through various forms of exploits. These affect both Windows and Linux, including the GeForce line as well as Quadro, NVS, and the Tesla GPUs. The vGPU bugs affect guest driver software, Citrix hypervisor, VMware vSphere, Red Hat Enterprise Linux KVM, and Nutanix AHV. Now, patches are a available for most of the issues via NVIDIA's display driver and vGPU software pages, as well as push through auto updates. So make sure you have auto updates turned on. A few of the updates will come the week of July 6. Now, before I leave, I want to say thank you so much to Svein, Edward, and Vladimir, who joined the Patreon team this week. Thank you so much to each and every one of you. You are so awesome, and I truly appreciate it. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe. I'm Shannon Morse and I will see you on the internet.